Classic Porsche parts versus classic Mercedes parts. What's the difference? Well, here's a dumb question. What has four wheels and is shaped like half of an egg and makes a lot of noise and you open the door and there's like no, well, maybe there is some room. I don't know. But anyway, the, the, but the, the, the punchline of the joke is that it's a Porsche 356 because you don't really know what it is. You know it's a car. You know it's a sports car. You can hear it running, but like the trunk's in the wrong place. The engine is in the wrong place. You get it in the interior and it's not bad. It's just, you know, like if you want to die that way inside a little tiny bubble car, if it gets T-boned by an SUV, fine. But they're, they're actually much stronger cars than I give them credit for. Now, in 1965, Porsche developed the 911, which was a much better car. I don't understand why anybody would be so into a 356 when they could just get an early 911. An early 911 does everything better, you know, and it's, it's like a more modern car. I think it feels better. It's got more usable power. It's not a Volkswagen. You know, it's got a real motor. There are all sorts of neat variants of it. And again, the restoration costs are pretty high. Now, last week I had a conversation with a friend of mine who owns a very reputable Porsche shop. And he, um, he and I were talking about some of the differences between Mercedes parts and Porsche parts. So if you have a classic air-cooled Porsche, like a 911, you know, or a G-body 911 specifically, or whatever, like one of those cars, um, Bosch fuel pump, Bosch relays, Bosch fuses, all the stuff Bosch makes, you know, you can basically get all that stuff. But once you start getting into specialized parts, there's a problem, and that's that a lot of them are made in China. Now, Mercedes, even though I'd say that they are not a perfect company, they at least are not ripping us off by selling us very expensive parts from China. Their stuff is made in Germany. It's made to a high standard. It's not changing anytime soon. It's not being made of garbage. It's not being made for 25 cents in the dollar, then passed off to other, you know, passed off it as a $300 part. I don't know. Just something, something that is... Uh, really frustrating to me is that somebody could pay thousands of dollars for Porsche parts and they get a bag of Chinese junk. Now, Porsche, of course, doesn't have the financial capability Mercedes did. And one thing I learned in this conversation was that when Vindel and Vita King tried to buy Volkswagen, imagine like the, one of the smallest manufacturers tries to leverage their way into buying a huge manufacturer like Volkswagen. It's like, don't do it. Volkswagen doesn't make any money. You know, they just, their cars suck. Everybody knows that. You know, the only thing they did right was make a diesel and then that stupid emission scandal came along and they ruined it for everybody. I mean, because, oh, we don't want you having a 50 mile per gallon diesel car that pollutes occasionally. We want you to buy an expensive hybrid, you know, just saying, you know, but I, I personally think the whole Volkswagen's emission scandal was a sham and garbage and BS. Um, but Vita King, Vita King thought that he could buy Volkswagen. As a result, Porsche's parts manufacturers did not get paid. So now, if Porsche goes to Bosch and says, hey, I need you to make a run of these relays, guess what Bosch says? No, we're not doing business with you again. Sorry. We'd rather make stuff for Mercedes who pays their bills, you know? Sorry, we need to make some EHA valves for Mercedes. Mercedes is paying their bills. We're going to call the subcontractor that makes the EHA valves for us. We're going to order 200 of them instead of making 50 of this stupid relay. So Porsche kind of shot themselves in the foot, which is why all of their content is low quality. Now, Mercedes, on the other hand, you can get all these great original parts. You know, I mean, I know some of them are going away, but for the most part, I ordered front fenders and headlight buckets for a 123 last week. 350 a fender, 80 bucks a headlight bucket, plus hood hinges. You know, for a 123 that's wrecked, I'm going to rebuild the whole front end on that I bought. Huh? I mean, you can restore the car. Step one, restore the car. And you don't have to restore it out of the J.C. Whitney catalog, like a classic Chevy. It just bugs me to no end that when a really interesting Mercedes pops up for sale on Craigslist or Marketplace, oh, that's too big of a project. Oh, you know why it's too big of a project? It's because people are wasting their time doing other stupid things. They're wasting their time watching Netflix. They're wasting their time, 
I don't know. Personally, I think working too much. I think our society has a problem with forcing people to work 60 hours a week when they should only be working 40 because huge corporations um, like, um, I don't know, General Electric or Lockheed or Harris in this area or some of the others expect their employees to perform at one and a half, the rate, the rate of one and a half employees. So people don't have any vision or anything, their passion for doing something interesting like restoring an old car that they can actually use and drive is sort of sucked out of them. The other thing is maybe we don't have enough people in the trades, we don't have enough people doing rust repair or paint work. It's like, where are all the painters? If you're a painter and you want to paint my Mercedes, contact me. I'll pay you any amount of money as long as you actually get the work done. I mean, I'd love to work with a painter. But the, you know, the problem keeps coming up over and over again, where we as a society, like, maybe just look at an old Mercedes and forget what a good car it is. Mark my words, you idiots. The time is coming when you're not going to be able to buy a car that will last more than seven years that cannot drive, that you, that you, that you can't drive anywhere without stopping and recharging it and waiting for 30 minutes. And that's if the power grid is even working. I mean, there is, there is no, I was watching California Insider this morning, which is a great show. You know, I, it's a, despite the fact it's owned by the Epoch Times, which is a conservative newspaper, it's a great show where they interview people from California. It's a very nonpartisan show. It doesn't get into which side is right, which side is wrong. It, is, it just has people from California who deal with problems like utilities or the power grid or water supply, talking about why those problems exist in California to begin with, you know? And I mean, if you're in California, you know what you need to do? You need to go buy two or three classic Mercedes and restore them because what is gonna happen is all these people are gonna get into EVs. They're never gonna fix their power grid. The power grid's gonna crash. Nobody's gonna be able to go anywhere except for you because you have an older car, you know? You can make biodiesel in your garage if you read a few chemistry books which is what I did when, you know, the gas prices were really high back in 2008. So I'm just saying, like, you guys need to start thinking of the solution to the problem. Don't use vegetable oil. That's not a solution. It just kills the motor. Try to actually think of a, a long-term sustainable solution because your government's not going to find one. EVs are not a long-term sustainable solution for 99% of the U.S. population. They're just not, you know. They're not a solution for anybody except for, like, the top 5% of society that can afford a Tesla. I don't want to go spend 60 grand on a Tesla. I'd rather pay off my house. How about put a roof on my house? We just had a hurricane. You know what a roof costs? A roof is eighteen to $20,000. I am so thankful I don't have a car payment because I'm going to take all that money I save not having a car payment, you know, not having a supercharger installed on my wall for a Tesla and actually use it to put a roof on my house. Hey, a roof, you know, anyway. All right. I gotta go. Please like, share, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications. I'll talk to you in the future. Thanks. Bye.